Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, November 15th, a meeting of the Transportation Committee. And I'm Debbie Dry, your chair of this committee. And I would like to call this meeting to order. And I see we have um, most of our board here, Lori, Mary, Tim, and we have staff here. We have Eric and we have um, Linda, we have Lori, and we have Sarah. So. Thank you guys for being here. First order of business is the approval of minutes. You have before you the October 18th, 2022. Um, can I have a motion to move the minutes? I make a motion to approve the Approve minutes. the minutes. And I'll make a second. Um, approved, uh, motion, moved by Lori and seconded by Mary. Any discussion, you guys, on uh, the minutes? Done wonderfully again. Yeah, she does a great job. She does. <laughs> you you and, do. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, so, all those in favor, say aye. 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 And so the minutes are moved. Thank you again. Next order of business is our committee, uh, committee discussion. And we have the first order is the Winset Drive, a speeding concern. And that's a follow up that Sarah has um, some information for us on. Thanks, Sarah. Sure, so Winterset Drive and Heather Drive, um, we had a resident call in for a speeding concern. We did put out traffic counters. Um, for Heather Drive, our ADT was 55 and our 85th percentile was 27 for the high. Um, going in the other direction, it was 24. Um, but we always show the highest of those two. For winter set, our ADT was 165, sorry, 167, and our 85th was 30. So the speed limit in that neighborhood, it's a closed loop neighborhood, but the speed limit is 25, so that did have a high of five over the speed limit for the southern road, which is winter set. Um, generally, our next step in a situation like that would be to request enforcement. Um, so that would be our first recommendation to the committee. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. good. And I can see why, because it's that straight away. Is that where, they, where the speed? Yep. Yeah, yeah we the counter try to was about put them right in the middle. Yeah. Just, we try to here. optimize so people don't say, well, it was near the curve or it was too far. So we put them in, I won't say the worst case scenario, but you know where it's most likely we try to center it. Yep. in there and then same on that called the back stretch of heather drive we put it kind of in that mid you know portion of the straightaway there again kind of in the middle of a hill right capture mm -hmm. the highest, highest and again this potential street would just there, be so. neighbors because it doesn't go anywhere right yep. and i think the initial concern came in from someone texting and driving and not paying attention and going too fast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, given that we said, well, I don't think we had counts either recently or possibly at all mm -hmm. um, for that neighborhood. So we said, well, it's at least worth our while to get a benchmark, you know, mm -hmm. what those counts are. And, you know, we right. can look at the time of day, we can pull out, you know, kind of what that peak hour is of if there is speeding, is it, you know, morning hours, people going to work, is it kids coming home from school? You know, we can kind of pinpoint that and then pass it on to the mm -hmm. sheriff's office if they want to do any sort of enforcement. We can never pinpoint if it's the same car over and over again, can we? We can't, we're not, <laughs> no. we're not quite that sophisticated yet, mm. but. <laughs> That's so, I, it would be, I would be interested to find out what kind of, if it is. <laughs> that would be kind of cool if we could. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. That'd that solve sounds, a lot of problems a lot faster. But. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like, any other discussion on this? Move it ahead um, and we will put this through for, um, to be to request to enforcement. Request enforcement down there, and sure. with the with the um, sheriff's department. We can do that. Thank you. When do we get a follow up from them uh, after how much how long after enforcement? Do we get anything or no? Not typically. I know the supervisor meets monthly. Mm -hmm. I can check with her if she gets anything. I think they just put it on there. They've got their morning sheets. I think it just gets put on their hot list of you know streets to you know pay attention to. So I don't know as we get too much follow up. I know the one we did have follow up on um, was Dublin Road. You mm -hmm. know back in the day they were out there. There were some repeated concerns. I think they came back and said they wrote one ticket in that 
time frame that we had requested, mm -hmm. and I think that was requested, mm -hmm. you know, multiple times. That's the only time that I've specifically heard back whether the supervisor gets any, you know, updated information. I think they just put it on a sheet of, as the route patrolling mm -hmm. to make sure and, you know, keep a better, you know, watch on some of these roads with concerns. Well, I surely will um, mention that to her, too, when she's meeting with them and see if they have any follow-up for her on that, uh, on this issue. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the Liberty Street Motts Lane Route 441 uh, traffic analysis, a New York State Department of uh, Transportation traffic analysis letter update. Mark, I know this came to the town board as well as. Yeah, um, this came to the, uh, the town board. We had a request um, from a resident for a traffic light at both Penfield Road um, as well as Liberty Street. Um, Sarah's kind of highlighted on the screen the two locations. Mm -hmm. Both of those um, fall under the jurisdiction of the state DOT as being, you know, their road, their intersection. Um, did send those off. It's been several months. They did a study. Um, they came back and said that, you know, in those locations, it doesn't meet the warrants that they have or requiring a traffic light. Um, I think we kind of all assume that, you know, going in, but wanted the state to, you know, go through their process and their due diligence to take a look at those. So. It's more of an FYI for this committee on, on that aspect. It doesn't fall under our jurisdiction as the town, um, but the state did take a look at it. They did provide a letter back. You know, we'll provide that letter back to the resident who raised the initial concern or the initial, mm -hmm. you know, request for the traffic lights. That's a tough, it's a tough area right there. You know, I know exactly what they're referring to as far as turning left onto, um, from Mott's Lane onto, um, yeah, certain times of day. Know. Well, Mott's is a right in, right out on mm -hmm. the end on the south side, so that's mm -hmm. set up as a right in, right out. So, to not encourage people to try to make the left across right. lanes and down 441 Liberty Street is not a restricted egress. I know most people try to go out to the right. Depends mm -hmm. on the time of day, the middle of the day. You know, there's not that much traffic. It's fine if it's evening. You got the evening commute, and everybody's heading back eastbound. You know, that's a tough movement to get you know in or out of. Mm -hmm. I live back in that, right in that area, so I'm walking in there. I'm very familiar with it. It's a speed is a can be an issue back in there. And then subsequent to that, um, we also did recently receive an email. I don't know if that was passed along to the committee. Uh, where well, the resident had a concern turning left out of Liberty Street onto Five Mile. Mm -hmm. um, so just on the other side, um, again, that falls under the county jurisdiction, so we passed it on to the county. Um, that just came in recently. Um, you know, they took a look at it. They, you know, we're going to pass it on to the state. I think a lot of the concern was the, the backup of traffic coming up five mile out of the 441 intersection um, and then trying to get someone, one, to let them into the gap, not block the side street. There is a sign out there already that says don't block the side street. <laughs> But I mean, then if, you have to read. Oh, well. But then even if you don't, <laughs> yeah. now you're pulling blind out into, if, especially if you're heading northbound, you're turning left into, you know, an active travel lane and you got to know if someone's coming the other way. So, you know, I understand the, you yeah. know, the concern and, mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully if people get to know the area, you know, you could go up Highland and Highland up to Gebhardt and get a little further away from the intersection. Um, you know, you may have to plan your route a little bit, but it, times of day, school getting out, um, commute times, you know, obviously that gets backed up through there. The state said they'd look at it, but likely they'd have to change timing of the signal light. If they change the timing right. to allow more time on five mile, then you back up, you're taking it away from somewhere else. Now you're mm -hmm. taking it away from 441. So you just extend the wait times on 441. So it's it's a, just a tough area. I mean, I live right on in Cobblestone, and so I'm off a of Highland. So if there's ever a, a backup on Five Mile, they're cutting through Highland anyways to get over to um, to Liberty, Liberty yeah. to um, then back to 441, or vice versa. They're cutting on Liberty to go to Highland. To, so we see that a lot, you know, especially with the fire department at being at the Four Corners as well too. When there's a, a backup, when there's a, it's a tough call. What to um, yeah. To help that to help that situation. Yeah, it, it's not an easy answer to it. I know the school district, um, and that kind of leads into our, our next item when we can get there. But the school district is looking at um, and has already taken methods 
um, to have further queuing in the morning around their property to try to have people in. So you come into the high school, you loop around the building um, as part of drop off to install more queuing within their their property. So now they're looking at it. I know they're looking at moving the bus garage. Um, so if the bus right. garage leaves five mile, that may alleviate you know some traffic. So I know the school district's looking at their options on methods. I know they've staggered some school times. I know they start different than St. Joe's and St. Um, and uh, Charles Finney Charles to, Finney. to mm -hmm. stagger starts a little bit. So I know you know they're mm -hmm. trying you know their best to alternate times, but some of it's just you know commuters and yeah, it's tough uh, with, with a lot of schools in there. You're right. It's a yeah, you've got four schools and you know with cobbles in that small small area. So this is on the radar for um, the state to, to, to look at? But um, the county the, basically the came back with an initial response. I don't know if they're going to generate a formal letter. Um, okay. I just saw an initial reaction. The, the um, concerned citizen, you know, asked for uh, a mirror or something across right. the street from the intersection. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, they don't typically do that. Um, you know, they said normally they'd look at, you know, having a don't block the intersection sign that's up already. They'd look at, you know, what's causing the backup. That's the queuing of 441. So, you know, it asked the state to take a look at that. I'm sure the state will come back saying, well, if they, as I said earlier, if they add time to the five mile, Mm -hmm. through traffic they're taken away from 441 so that's always a balance for them on that so well the left turn arrow phase that they added has created a longer queue for the throughs yep that's the, that's the trade off you you want a left turn <laughs> you're going to wait longer on the throughs so yeah they're not picking you up you're going to lean into the mic oh yeah. i'm sorry oh yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> so. just a quick note there the left turn phase that was added uh, with the arrow for the southbound lefts has increased the length of that th through queue. Wasn't as bad before. It was bad, but not as bad. And now it doesn't clear every cycle either during those peak, that three to four time. I've been in it a few times and you end up waiting several cycles to get through on the through. So yeah. I see uh, every turning movement takes away from something else. So right. the turns are better. The left turns off of that, you know, have improved. You're not stuck. Left turns are improved through is stuck waiting the, before it would be yep. one person, two people maybe make it through on the yellow if you're lucky. And then, you know, the queue backed up. So those clear a little bit better, but right. now you're adding, you know, longer lengths on the other legs. So the only real cure for that is a, is a widening and a more through lanes so that you can have two throughs and that would but of course that has super high impacts to yeah. everything i mean already Never the happened. impact of four lanes on 441 yeah. and in the four corners is on well rooted. on five mile yeah but i'm saying uh, looking right. back at oh yeah the that's... widening of 441 and the impacts that that's had you know oh, yeah. look at adding that on yep five mile then oh yeah that'll never happen <laughs> probably not so we'll put this still on um mark do you want do we want to wait until we get um, here from the county on that i mean i don't think we need i don't know if we need to put it as a held item we can obviously bring it back up okay. once if we get anything formal back i just saw those kind of anecdotal first responses from the from the county um, you know, DOT, we'll see if they come back with a formal letter. We can put it back on, you know, for that. Um, and then we'll see if we get anything formal from the, the state back on that as well. I just want to be able to give the resident on yeah. an answer. I mean, back. we can put it as a held item if you'd like, just so we don't lose track of it. Just and that then we're still waiting to hear about that. We, you know, what we discussed we'll it. And thank you. Yep. So we can do that. And then, as you said, I think this leads into your next on the Gebhardt Road and Five Mile Line Pedestrian Crossing update, Mark. Yeah, so um, the supervisor and I have met with the school district um, as well as the uh, county DOT. So uh, initially was the, the question concern from a resident um, for students walking to school, um, student safety. Um, so a little while back, we had worked with the county and gotten uh, the ped buttons uh, across from Liberty Street. So we installed those in on Liberty Street. Um, I think those have been been working, um, haven't heard any issues, concerns with that. Um, and then most recently is with Gebhardt, that students live down Gebhardt are trying to get to school, mm -hmm. um, crossing that. People aren't respecting the crosswalk, so they you know, asked the, the county to consider putting in those uh, ped buttons. Um, the county has agreed to that. Um, I think at this point in time and this late in the year, they need to 
pour concrete, so it would likely be a spring install. They've got to order the, okay. the units, so it would be a springtime portion. At the same time, um, there was also a request to have um, a crossing guard at the five mile and high school drive intersection. Um, but you'd be mixing traffic lights with ped buttons with the crossing guard. Yeah. Um, so we understand the person's concern for safety of pedestrians, but you've got, there are ped buttons at that intersection. Um, you know, there is a, a traffic light. They are going to look at, you know, timing of the light. Is there times they can adjust it? Um, that traffic light is owned by the school district, um, but it's on the, the county system. Tim, correct me when I'm mm -hmm. wrong. Correct. They were talking about doing some upgrades to that traffic light so that it could be adjusted more frequently. So if they have a concert, if they have an event or activity, they could allow more green time to let people out of the school, into the school. Um, and I know the county said that they would look at that, but there needed to be some upgrades to the, the traffic light to allow that to happen. But that may help during special events or things that they know about or you know activities that are coming up. Um, but the school district is now currently queuing people around the school to get more people in off the road. Um, you know, so they're not queuing on to five mile as much in the morning. So they come in, queue around, and then I've noticed come back I've out. had to go by there, and I dreaded it. <clears throat> and the other day, I had a meeting with somebody at uh, Starbucks early, and I'm thinking, oh, and I just sailed right through. They, so I think some of that, that must be what they're mm -hmm. has worked. Uh, so yeah. They they do have staggered school starts. They've got some others. So I think they're they're trying, you know, the best they can. The school working with the county, working with the light, and then most recently is you know the update to this committee is getting that ped, you know, uh, that flashing button um, at Gebhardt. So it, you know provide a crosswalk there, and then you know safely get students to cross from Gebhardt over, and then you know up to High School Drive, and then you know can walk into the school from there. I think that's a, a real going to be a real win because I know that that the work that went on to try to get that that crossing uh, there at Gebhardt is, is I think important. I mean I think it's too far up though. You know I get that there's one at the high school drive, but and that was always why we there wasn't one right at Gebhardt. But I think there is a need with enough of those people walking into two more you know that cross the road, especially with St. Joe's and Cobbles being right where the majority of people the kids are walking. Yep. from that neighborhood so yep. as well as walkers up to trying to cross you know trying to get across over there in their neighborhood right there so great so we'll look forward to that in the spring and um yeah i don't have a set schedule on that i know they just said that obviously they need to order the infrastructure and okay. then you know pour concrete for the bases so at this point in the year would be a springtime install for that okay there is a sidewalk on the west side of five mile right all the way up to High School Drive. There is, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Should be encouraging people to use that sidewalk and cross at the PED-controlled three-color signal at yeah. High School Drive, rather than a crossing them at a mid-block. And mid-block yeah. crossings are never as safe as one at an intersection. Yeah, and I think, sir, if you zoom in on Gebhardt, I think they were looking at possibly because there is. I don't know if there's sidewalks on both sides of Gebhardt in that location. There are. There are. They're just yep. No, oh, both no, sides of Five Mile Gebhardt. A, I don't think they're Gebhardt on the south, only on the one side. south side Correct. there. Which is, that's the good spot to be. Because yep. then you can go right yeah. up to the west right side over. of Five Mile. If people go right on, mm -hmm. well, it's not red, but make right. right turns, at least you're on the left side that's of right. that. So I know they were looking at that crosswalk as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we have a couple of held, held, still held items that we're um, holding on to. Is there any new business tonight? Anybody? Seeing none for no, new business. So unless anybody else has any other information, anything to share, um, our next meeting will be Tuesday, February, not till February 22nd, oh. 21st rather, 2023. Wow, oh. the year went fast. <laughs> so, um, or is going fast. So unless anybody has anything else, I, um, this meeting will be adjourned now at uh, 520. So I thank you all. Have a very nice um, Thanksgiving's coming up next week and then the rest of the holidays. And see you all in the new year. Yeah. You bet. Thank you.